right, now let's go over domain 4.3, explain various activities associated with vulnerability management. So in these objectives, we're gonna go over how we identify different vulnerabilities, the analysis of vulnerabilities, and how we're gonna score them, how we're going to put them out, this common vulnerability enumeration, how we describe them, the different classifications, and then anything else going to be part of managing and describing those vulnerabilities. And then we're gonna go over vulnerability response, how we validate remediation, and then reporting of vulnerabilities. So identification methods, vulnerability scan. So obviously the number one thing we're gonna do to find vulnerabilities within our network is scan. This could be as simple as a network scan doing like Nmap or Nessus. This could be a credentialed in-depth scan that's gonna go over third-party apps on our operating systems. But vulnerability scanning just as a whole, that's gonna be an automated process to proactively identify security weaknesses in networks, systems, and applications. So there will be different types of scanning depending on what your priorities are. Like I've already described, you can do network, system, or application scanning. So regular scanning. This is conducted periodically to ensure continuous security posture assessment. We have comprehensive scanning. So this scans cover a wide range of system components, including software, networks, and endpoints. So this could be like your credentialed scan that's going to go into your endpoints, your network, your software with elevated privileges. That's going to also allow you to look at third-party applications. Vulnerability scanning can help you do early detection. So they can help you see like, hey, you have an open port here. You have this patch that's not applied. It hasn't been exploited yet, but now you know about it. Let's go ahead and patch that up. Application security. So we want to make sure we're also scanning our application. So we're going to have different ways to do that. We have static analysis and dynamic analysis, and also not listed here, something called fuzzing or fuzzer. So application security focuses on identifying, fixing, and enhancing the security of apps by finding, fixing, and preventing vulnerabilities. So static analysis, we kind of talked about this in our domain 4.1 slides. This is going to examine the application's code to detect vulnerabilities without running the program. So this is looking at the source code, right? Opening up an IDE, like VS Code, looking through it with a senior engineer, maybe having IAST in there as well, interactive application security testing by enabling a plugin to look for just uh, obvious vulnerabilities in the code. Dynamic analysis. This is when the code is compiled. We have the application running, so it's in a runtime environment, and now we're doing active tests against it, like SQL injection, buffer overflow, integer overflow, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, doing all of our common web application attacks, or maybe even for our mobile application. One thing I want to show you guys here is an organization called OWASP. So the OWASP organization is an open source project that goes over common or web application security risks. So we have the top 10 here. And this is something you would want to test during like dynamic and static. You want to come here if you're doing web application testing and be like, okay, do we have broken access control? I can use this website to look at what that means, a description, how to prevent it, and example attack scenarios. So another, threat feeds. So we can have threat feeds that deliver us real-time information of the current cybersecurity landscape of known vulnerabilities. So we have OSINT feeds. This is going to leverage publicly available information to identify potential vulnerabilities and threats. We have proprietary or third party. So this is going to offer exclusive insights from specialized security providers. So like this is you subscribing to something. We have information sharing organizations. So this is going to facilitate the exchange of threat information among trusted members. One uh, way or one example of this would be the taxi and sticks client server architecture, which I don't think is in the exam objectives for this security plus, but if you want to look into that and then dark web monitoring. So something you can do is download something like Tor Web Browser and monitor the dark web, especially after security breach where data may have been stolen and possibly information being sold on the dark web. You can monitor that. Then we have penetration testing. So another way we can test our environments to see if we are or to deliver proactive measures, right? To do threat hunting if we don't have our own threat hunting teams to ensure that our 
external threats, we know what they see. We can do penetration testing, which is going to simulate cyber attacks on our systems, applications, or entire infrastructures. So, to, and one slide to describe a penetration test, definitely not enough, but this is just a single bullet point, okay? So we're just going to give you high-level overview. You hire penetration testing firms or attackers to test your entire enterprise. You could say, hey, we're going to give you a black box environment. Pretend you're a hacker coming from the external, from the outside, and do what you need to do to attack us. We could say, hey, we're deploying a web application server. We have this kind of infrastructure. We want you to perform a white box test where we give you all the information, try to exploit it. We could do gray box texting where we give them some information. And then we can also, that's just the environment. We could say, hey, we want you just to attack our network, try to infiltrate our systems, do whatever you need to do. We want to also deliver and come up with ROEs, rules of engagement between you, your organization, and the penetration testers. We can do blind tests where we as a small group say, hey, we're going to hire a penetration testing firm. We're not going to tell our SOC analysts, our threat hunters, and we're going to see if they discover it, right? So we have real world attack simulation. That's where they're going to mimic tactics and techniques of real attackers. So this could be like a penetration testing firm saying, hey, we mimic the Sandworm team. We, If you hire us, we can ensure that your ICS and your SCADA systems are protected against a well-known APT team because we simulate them. We have the reporting side of this. So after the test is done, did we establish in the ROEs how they're going to do cleanup and how they're going to report? Because sometimes some penetration testing firms, if you don't write it out, they won't give you a lessons learned. They won't tell you how to fix something. They'll just say, hey, we exploited you. You suck. Goodbye, right? So we want to make sure that we just establish uh, contractual agreements with our penetration testing firms. Responsible disclosure programs. So responsible disclosure programs encourage ethical reporting of security weaknesses by external parties, often by rewarding contributors. So this is famously known as bug bounty programs, okay? This is where, as a big organization like Apple has it, we're going to say, hey, we'll pay anybody 250 grand, so that'd be that much, 10 grand, if they can exploit this X, Y, and Z process, service, or infrastructure. That's a bug bounty program. And it's going to have structured reporting. This provides a clear and ethical path for reporting vulnerabilities. So this is like if you want to engage in Red Hat activities and on your own, you're just an enthusiast, or maybe you have a team that's dedicated to doing bug bounties, this is a way you can do ethical hacking, right? We also have system and process audits. So we can audit our own environments. We can do internal audits, external audits. We can actually have organizations and get certified in our audits, like a SOC type 2 audit. So system and process audits are formal inspections to ensure compliance with policies and standards, identifying security lapses and weaknesses. So what we're saying here is that there could be a lot of different reasons in how we do audits. If we want to do an audit to make sure we're PCI compliant, that's specific, right? We want an external party to make sure we're PCI compliant. If we as an organization adopt the NIST risk management framework, and cybersecurity framework, and we think we're implementing those controls correctly, we can get a SOC audit where they're going to give an opinion to say, hey, yeah, your policy and standards meet that uh, framework's policies and standards, okay? And we can judge that. That could be like a SOC type 2 audit. So an audit is going to have compliance verification. It's going to do gap analysis for us. So maybe it's going to identify discrepancies between current practices and your desired security posture. It's also going to give us actionable insights. It's going to say, hey, you do or do not have this, okay? And then you can go and actually action those. All right, let's go ahead and do our check on learning. Let me bring up our quiz here. Okay, so domain 4.3, question one. What is the primary purpose of conducting a vulnerability scan on IT systems? That is going to be C, to find and assess vulnerability systems and software. So again, a vulnerability scan at a high level, we know there's a bunch of different ways we can accomplish it, but it's just to find vulnerabilities in our network. Question two, what is the main benefit of using static analysis in application security? 
That's going to be B. It's going to analyze the application source code without executing it. Now, remember, static analysis is not in a runtime environment. Question three. What is the main objective of conducting a system slash process audit in an organization? That's going to be D, to assess and ensure compliance with policies and regulations. So a process audit, that's like, hey, we want to be compliant to these uh, this data sovereignty rules, to these policies that we've created, and certain regulations we have to adhere to. Let's do an audit so we can ensure we're covering all of our bases. Question four. What is the primary purpose of a bug bounty program? That's going to be B, to offer incentives for finding and reporting software bugs. So this is how organizations can give a reward for finding exploits and vulnerabilities in an ethical way. Well, they have to report it, right? To get rewarded, and then we can go fix it. Question five, which of the following best describes open source intelligence, OSINT, in the context of cybersecurity? That's going to be B. Intelligence collected from publicly available sources. Last question, question six. What is the primary goal of penetration testing? That is going to be to identify and exploit vulnerabilities in systems. So just it, guys, right? We're paying someone to come in and say, hey, we need to get exploited. We want to be proactive and making sure that we have our good defense in depth. 